Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Spacing Out. I'm Maureen Ellsbury. And I'm Alejandro Rojas. Thank you for joining us. We're here to get you caught up on the news, so here are some of the UFO stories making headlines recently. A witness photographed what appears to be a saucer-shaped UFO hovering over the English city of Manchester. John Henley was at a friend's house in Middleton, Manchester on Friday, November 7th. He awoke at approximately 10 a.m. after reportedly feeling a lunar pole drawing him to the window. Standing at his third floor window, Henley felt compelled to take a photograph. So he pulled out his cell phone and snapped two photos. The photos show illuminated saucer-shaped objects seemingly hovering over the city. According to the Daily Mail, the object, which is oval-shaped with lights emanating from it, remained in the same position in the sky for half an hour before disappearing. Henley states that when he photographed the object, he assumed it was a glitch in the sky. Two days after the incident, he claims he felt compelled to look at the photos. He asserts that when he viewed the images, he felt a magnetic pole, a lunar pole, like when he was drawn to the window. I definitely think it could have been a UFO, Henley suggests. Although the object in these photos that were taken through a window appear to be simple reflections of a light source inside the room, Hindley comments, I really don't think it is a reflection. Look at the saucer-shaped object and the lights and the two lines coming out of the bottom. The available details pertaining to the sighting are conflicting, though. Although reports describe the object hovering in the sky for half an hour, the Daily Express also reports that Henley didn't see what he managed to photograph until two days later when the mysterious polling sensation returned. So it is unclear if the witness actually observed the mysterious object during the time the photographs were taken. IFC Midnight is making it clear that UFOs and aliens are a key focus in the company's content portfolio. The subsidiary of AMC Networks acquired distribution rights to two UFO-related films earlier this year, Hangar 10 and Extraterrestrial, and this distribution label has reportedly just acquired distribution rights for another UFO-related movie titled Ejecta. Entertainment news website Bloody Disgusting describes that in Ejecta, reclusive UFO conspiracy theorist William Cassidy is taken prisoner by a secret government agency investigating the arrival of an alien life form. Through flashbacks, they uncover the terrifying details of what happened the night the alien returned and that changed everything we thought we knew about the universe. The movie was written by Tony Burgess, directed by Chad Archibald and Matt Wheel, and produced by independent studio Foresight Features. Dee Wallace, the mom from E.T. the Extraterrestrial, makes a cameo in this film. Ejecta premiered back in August 2014 at the Fantasia International Film Festival in Montreal. It's unclear what IFC Midnight has planned for the movie, but if it follows the same formula used for Hangar 10 and Extraterrestrial, the movie will soon be made available on video on demand and released in select theaters. A witness in Canton, Georgia, submitted a UFO sighting report to the Mutual UFO Network in which he claims to have watched and photographed two cigar-shaped UFOs. The details of the sighting, which were posted on OpenMinds.tv by MUFON's communication director, Roger Marsh, stated that the witness was outside on a driveway and about to walk inside on November 6 when the object was first seen. I looked at my right, facing southeast, to see if my horses were in their stalls, the witness stated. I then noticed something rather odd flying above the barn as the sky was clear and not cloudy and still broad daylight. The object was flying in an odd sort of way, not like any aircraft I am aware of would or could fly. The witness described the object stating it was shimmering, it appeared to be glowing, it had no wings and it looked like two silver cigar shapes attached together by a small tubular connection. The witness tried to understand what the object was. From the distance of height, I venture to guess it was possibly not as large as a commercial aircraft, but perhaps the size of a private airplane. I had the impression it seemed to be ascending, but also seemed to be floating and at first moved slowly. When the object appeared to be above the witness's house, a photograph was taken with a cell phone, but moments later the object was gone. The witness explains, when I looked up again, it was gone either out of sight or vanished. It left me with an unsettled feeling. Roswell researcher and author Tom Carey told the crowd at the American University last week that he has a smoking gun to prove once and for all that aliens are real. According to an article by WTOP Washington, Carey claims to have a picture of an alien, but did not have the picture with him. Carey has been researching the alleged crash of a flying saucer in Roswell, New Mexico since 1991. He is a co-author and researcher of a couple books on the topic with his research partner Don Schmidt. 
He told the crowd that the images are, are on Kodachrome color slides and that the research on the legitimacy of the slides has been promising. Carey says, what's interesting is the film is dated 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it. And he said, yes, this film strip, the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. And from the emulsions on the image, it's not something that's been photoshopped. Like today, it's original 1947 images, and it shows an alien who's been partially dissected lying in a case. He also described what the alien in the slides looked like. Three and a half to four feet tall, the head is almost insect-like. The head has been severed and there's been a partial autopsy. The innards have been removed and we believe the cadaver has been embalmed, at least at the time this picture was taken. He says he received the slides from a couple in Texas. The woman was a high-powered Midland, Texas lawyer with a pilot's license. We think she was involved in intelligence in World War II, and her husband was a field geologist for an oil company, claims Kerry. The UFO community has been excited about the American University presentation, which was largely made up of very credible researchers. The event was a panel discussion called UFOs, Encounters by Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials. An American University described the event as including four prominent national figures and was based on the honors colloquium Alien Contact, Science and Science Fiction by professor and filmmaker John Weisskopf. The panel also included investigative journalist and author Leslie Kane. The title of the event was taken from her New York Times best-selling book, UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Go on the Record. Another panelist was Dr. Richard Haynes, the co-founder of the National Aviation Reporting Center on Anomalous Phenomena, or NARCAP, and is a former NASA researcher. However, the WTOP article says the most riveting presentation of the night came from retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Charles Halt, one of the witnesses of a famous series of UFO sightings in England in 1980 known as the Rendlesham Forest Incident. Apparently, WTOP did not think much of Kerry's claims, but it's hard to fault them since claims is all they were. It is difficult to get too excited when a UFO researcher says he has a smoking gun, but he can't show it to you yet. I think the public often characterizes UFO research as a lot of spectacular claims without spectacular evidence. Leslie Kane was quick to distance herself from the alien pictures. On Facebook, she wrote, I had nothing to do with the Roswell part, just want to make that clear. An alleged student who was part of an honors course also commented on Kane's Facebook to explain why they added Carrie to the panel. The student wrote, I'm a student in the honors course. The Roswell section was deemed as a necessary balance in order to show different faces of the UFO investigation. While some could say that it could damage the integrity of what others are trying to accomplish, having Tom Carey act as an immediate juxtaposition position for those new to serious investigations into UFOs. The judgments were left for the audience to make rather than the panel by trying to make different parts of UFO investigation come together. Carrie and Schmidt's books are full of very interesting and credible testimony. Perhaps Carrie would have been more convincing had he shared that information, which is not well known to the general public. Although many in the UFO community do believe Kerry to be a credible researcher, the general public doesn't know him from the charlatans they hear about in the news. Now the pressure is on for Kerry to produce this amazing evidence. He says the images will be revealed early next year. Mm -hmm. And this is very interesting. This, these have been known about for a while. I know about a year ago yeah. they were discussed. There was a leak a year ago that created a lot of ruckus. Now Tom uh, Carrie and Don Schmidt have not said one word about these things and, until then. So there was a lot of rumors about their origins and where they had come from and the evidence. Um, when I had asked Don, he said, those are just rumors, you know, wait for the, the real info to come out. So it's really tough. I mean, I put a lot of stock in what Tom and Don say. I think they're great researchers, so I'm holding out hope. So, uh, but right now, you know, people are really skeptical. Right, and, and they should be. And I see maybe Carrie use this platform to sort of get some buzz built up for mm -hmm. this because it's not going to be revealed till next year. But at the same time, it seems like that should be a piece that is almost leaving the ridicule factor open for you yeah. because the press is saying, oh, okay, well, you have these great photos. You don't have them on you, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when maybe a uh, better buzz could have been built up surrounding the actual release of these photos. And yeah. 
I'm not getting my hopes up because, mm -hmm. you know, we've been let down by smoking mm -hmm. guns before, but um, next year, allegedly, we'll, we'll see these released. And there's a couple different uh, places in talks of where this will happen. And so we just got to wait and sort of see what they show us, I guess. Yeah, I think the general sentiment is uh, put up or shut up and uh, they better display some pretty convincing, amazing stuff at this point. Yep, and of course we're, we will talk all about it when that actually happens or gets mm -hmm. closer to that point. But that's it for this episode of Spacing Out. Please visit our website, openminds.tv, for all the latest UFO news. Also, don't forget to register for the 2015 International UFO Congress, which is the largest annual UFO conference in the world. That takes place February 18th through the 22nd in Fountain Hills, Arizona. You can find all that information at ufocongress.com. Let us know if you enjoyed today's episode by liking the episode on YouTube and leaving us your comments in the section below. You can also download our podcast, Open Minds UFO Radio, on iTunes or at openminds.tv forward slash radio. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Alejandro Rojas. And I'm Marine Ellsbury. We'll see you in the future.